All right, what's going on dudes and welcome to the very first Minecraft snapshot of 2013. There are a lot of cool new features in this one. I know I say that kind of frequently at the start of each of these snapshot update videos, but I'd sort of like to emphasize that this time around. So, version 1.5, as you may or may not be aware of, is supposed to be the quote-unquote redstone update. So many of the things that have been added this time around are related to redstone and trying to sort of improve the functionality of it. So, redstone buffs, be excited. Let's go ahead and get into things. A couple things to be aware of before we get into actually crafting and using these new items is uh, there's a new ore. It's called Nether Quartz and it's found in the nether. I just placed a block down here as an example. Can be mined with any pick and it will drop this nether quartz. So that's actually gonna be used in some of the crafting recipes for the items we're gonna be making here. So just keep that in mind. Also, there's this really cool new way that you can sort of craft items, move them around in your inventory screen. So if I pick up the stack of stone and I click and drag, it'll actually evenly distribute it all across where I'm dragging here. Very handy. Now you may be thinking, well that's kind of a mess to now clean up and get it all back in one stack. Not exactly. Just double click and everything is back together. So another thing to keep in mind because I'll be using it because it makes crafting a whole bunch easier. It's really nice actually. So now let's get into the first new redstone related object. So something to keep in mind is that a lot of these new added items that relate to redstone work not based off the principle of on or off, but actually as far as signal strength and how far your signal is traveling out. So it's a little bit more fine tuned than just, well, is it on or is it off? So our first couple things here are these detector pressure plates that output a signal to a certain length, a certain strength, however you prefer to call it, based upon how many blocks are on the pressure plate. So the way these are crafted are like so, and I'll just grab these couple stacks of stone as well. So the gold one is just made like so, and it's a weighted pressure plate. This is light, so the fewer blocks you add to it, the more it'll be affected, or lesser blocks will affect it more than this one, which is the heavy pressure plate. So the way this works is I've just set up these couple examples here. If I start throwing blocks onto the gold one, you'll notice the first one trips the first door. If I keep adding blocks, it'll slowly start tripping off each of these doors sequentially, depending upon how much weight I add to it. So there we go. All the doors tripped off. It didn't take too many blocks to do it. Um, but on the other hand, the iron one takes a lot. In fact, uh, it's going to take more than just one stack to even trip off three of them. So here we go, we've gone through the first stack already. Now I'll start going through the second one, and the third one should trip here shortly. Anyway, as you can probably tell, it takes quite a bit of weight to, uh, to get the signal to output a good distance from this one. So it's actually a pretty cool way as a uh, a relevant use in say an adventure map if you have to collect a certain number of items and you want to be able to check that the player has completed that objective and collected the designated amount of items you can check with one of these pressure plates and only when it has registered that many uh, items will it trip off the door that'll unlock something like that anyway can be used for adventure maps things like that so that is the two types of weighted pressure plates that have been added this next block is the daylight detector. Probably my favorite, especially for the sake of making these videos. So let me get to that in just a second. The way it's crafted is in this arrangement. I'll go ahead and make it really quickly just as an example. So we have some nether quartz here. Again, I'm just using the click and drag mechanism. God, it makes crafting so much easier. And there we go. We have a daylight sensor. So the way this works is again, it's not just on or off it actually varies the signal strength based upon how much day there is. So right now it's 12 noon. So as you can tell, the signal is all the way out as far as it can be because this is as high in the sky as the sun can be. But if we say, well, actually, let me go over here first and then we'll start messing around with the time of the day. So in this command block, we have a time set day command. And this is why I really like this thing uh, is because 
I'm sure you've seen many, many times in these videos that I will actually go and when it's getting close to night, I'll have to type in that command to set it back today so we can see more clearly again. And this actually automates it. So right now, because it's 12 noon, we have this daylight sensor and it's outputting a signal that carries into this block and it's keeping this redstone torch in the off position. So command block is doing nothing. But if we say add, because I don't want to actually wait for it to trip off by itself, say we add 3000 time to the day. So time add 3000. Now watch very carefully. I guess it didn't trip off quite yet. Hold on, we'll add just 1,000 more. And then it should trip, hopefully. There we go. That turns on, it triggers the command block, and it sets the time back today. So as soon as it crosses that threshold to where this is not outputting a signal long enough to deactivate the torch, the torch ignites again, and it sets off the command block and sets the time back to the beginning of the day. So it automates the, uh, the reset and makes you avoid nighttime. So it's very helpful for making these videos. And you may see this mechanism tucked away in future updates just for the sake of me not having to type in that command. Um, finally though, uh, it can be used for setting off a lamp at night. So if we just time set night and then we add say, uh, actually, I think it'll trip off pretty quickly here if I have it set properly once the moon starts to come up Just a couple seconds. It should retract the signal enough to set off the torch and there we go The light comes on so again varying degrees and that it will adjust the output signal Depending upon how much day or how much night there is so yeah And again, you can just add an inverter if you want it to be a, a nighttime sensor versus a daylight sensor So yeah, that's that now we'll go ahead and set things back today really quickly. Um, unfortunately, when you manually set it tonight, it sort of messes up the automated uh, sensor that resets it. So we'll just do it manually. All right. So anyway, the final block that is redstone related here is the comparator block. Now it's kind of confusing so let me try to go through it in the best explanation i could possibly come up with so it has two inputs input one is here input two is here those are arbitrary numbers input one input two it doesn't really matter for the sake of this explanation um, so each of these sets of triggers here each of these sets of levers are starting five blocks away one two three four five one two three four five now keep in mind that it doesn't matter how many of these are flipped, it's only whichever one is closest that determines the, what the stronger signal is. It doesn't matter if you have all five of these flipped versus one lever over here, it only matters which one is closest to this block right here that will determine the signal strength. So the way this works is that if I say flip off this lever right here, the second one, um, it's going to pass the signal on through. Now, it doesn't actually act like a repeater. It only passes the signal through at the same strength it came in at, and then it diminishes from there just as it would on a normal line of redstone. So it doesn't act like a repeater. Now, supposedly, according to diagrams, there should be a repeater option by right-clicking, but it's actually not functioning as it should, apparently. When you right-click it and this light comes on right here, it's supposed to take the signal and then relay it at full strength, just as a repeater would, but unfortunately there's no difference, and that's why the door is there, because this should trigger the door, um, but it's not, for whatever reason. I don't know if they changed it at last minute, if the diagrams are outdated, or if it's a bug, um, I'm not for sure. But anyway, uh, the purpose of the comparator is that it's supposed to compare these two inputs, and when this input is greater than or equal to in strength of this input, it will maintain the signal on through the device. So we then go ahead and say flip this, you'll notice it deactivates the signal and that's because this is closer to this block, hence a stronger signal strength than this lever. Because this lever is closer, this lever is farther away. Alternatively, if we go ahead and flip this one so that it's a closer signal, this is equal and equal will pass a signal on through. 
Alternatively, we say flip this one and then flip this one right here. Again, this is closer than this. Therefore, this side is emitting a stronger signal and it will not pass the signal through. So that is the comparator block in a nutshell. It just detects if this side is stronger or equal to this one and it'll pass the signal through provided that this again is greater than or equal to the signal on this side. So anyway, just keep in mind, I was confused at the start here um, that it doesn't matter how many levers you have flipped, it's only the closest ones on each side that matter. So anyway, that is the comparator block in a nutshell. And the way you craft that is, again, using some nether quartz and other items arranged like so. Let me do it really quickly. There we go. And that is the way you craft it. So those are the most significant redstone related items that have been added in this update. But there are a few more things to go over. I'm going to split it into uh, a couple of videos just in case you want to use this as sort of a, a reference to uh, to these different items. I'll add some annotations at the top. So if you ever want to revisit this and look over just an individual item, you can quickly navigate to its introduction and description. So anyway, that's about it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.